Hey, it's nice to have you back here in this new video. This is my Insta360 1-inch 360 edition. Uh, in my in-depth review on this camera, I've told you that the PureShot HDR is one of my favorite features in this camera. And it is an exclusive feature you only get with dual 1-inch sensor with 1RS core module. For the feature-packed 1RS 1-inch 360 edition, the PureShot HDR is actually one of my favorite features. You know, I love to take 360 photographs with premium imaging quality, and I always try to squeeze the best potential of every one of the 360 camera, and that is why I established my YouTube channel and share with you all of the techniques and knowledge that I have learned from the 360 camera industry. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a deep dive in the PureShot HDR mode, I'm going to tear it down I'll try to explain to you what is the real differences in between the PureShot HDR and the conventional HDR. Why is it so special to capture HDR shots with PureShot technology? And I will also share with you all the basic workflow, uh, some tips and tricks that I have learned while trying to uh, master the technique behind this PureShot HDR. So want to know more about it? Keep watching. And my name is Yijun Guo. My YouTube channel is dedicated to 360 photography, video, accessories, and some cutting technology. You know, PureShot HDR is kind of like another piece of cutting technology. Now let's get started and dive right in. Before we dive really deep into the PureShot HDR, just want to give you a brief recap on the history on PureShot. You know, uh, Insta360 is a very innovative 360 manufacturer that always emigrates the latest technology into 360 world. And I remember clearly that in the first quarter of the 2020, when they first launched the 1R, they have added the night mode. The night mode totally blew my away because it dramatically improved imaging quality, but the, the pipeline, the workflow is quite complicated. The night mode captured altogether nine DNG shots at eight with a same exposure and a minus four EV to bring back the detail in the highlight. That is a conventional multi-frame stacking technology that built into 360 camera for the first time. And in the year 2021, Insta360 added the pure shot in the, one of the huge firmware upgrade in the 1R and bring the pure shot technology to 4K mode and one inch like a mode. That totally blew my mind away because it almost generates equivalent imaging quality compared with night mode, but it was only a single raw DNG format. And this is pretty stunning. And I was very surprised on the real power of the computation photography. And on October 2021, they immigrate the pure shot technology into 360 camera 1X2 and the first bring this cutting piece technology into the 360 camera for the first time. And since then, the pure shot is always turned on feature for me, for every one of 360 camera. The 1X2, uh, the 1R with 4K, 1R with 1 inch. And I'm dreaming about, they could push the boundary of pure shot to the next level. And that is where the Insta360 launch, the 1RS and the 4K boost mod, that it can literally generate the 48 megapixel with pure shot technology on PC or Mac. Uh, that is another step forward for the pure shot on the high pixel density image coming with the release of the dual one inch image sensor, the one inch 360 edition. They finally elevate the potential of the pure shot to the next level because this is the first time that Insta360 has bring the pure shot technology into the HDR shooting mode. So coming next, let's take a look at what we can get. What is the option when we capture with HDR mode on a one inch 360 mod. And when you cycle in through the menus, the photo, video, you get the HDR photo. Tap in HDR photo and swipe from right to left. You get to see all the options. In the option menu, now you can see, you can turn on pure shot or only capture with INSP. That is a JPEG only format. And with pure shot, every one of the image will be saved in raw DNG format because with a one inch sensor, you literally get 12 bit color depths. And the second one is uh, the HDR amount. That is the auto exposure bracket number. You can cycle in through three, five, seven, or nine. So to capture a nine shot bracket, that is to say, 
you can literally capture from the minus 4 to plus 4 with uh, one EV step. The Intel 360 engineer has unlocked the EV step settings, but you can even capture its plus or minus 0 0.3, that is a one third stop and two thirds stop, 0 0.6 and one step EV. When you combine with the, the one EV step with HDR9 shot bracket, you can capture the plus four to minus four with nine high quality DNG file that each one of them will be treated on the pure shot AI algorithm. For the white balance, you also get some settings. You can use auto or you can change by all of this all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin. Normally, I would like to leave it to auto, but when you capture in the virtual tour use cases, I highly recommend you change to some uh, individual color temperature to, to get the best overall quality. And when you tap, on this button, you get to see the shutdown, the countdown timer. You have to three seconds, all the way up to 15 seconds. For each one of the seconds, now you can see with uh, 64 internal memory, if you capture in nine shot in DNG format, the shooting number is quite limited. As you can see on the top left, I recommend you use a large capacity micro SD card if you really want to uh, use the pure shot HDR in heavy duty use. Okay, and coming next, let's go to the post process workflow because uh, you can either use the Insta360 app to stack and merge the ISP format to get an HDR format straight out from your app. But this is not the real power of the pure shot HDR because on the desktop, with the help of Insta360 Studio 2022, you literally could generate a much better imaging quality with 14 bit color depths. Okay, now let's talk about the mobile workflow on a pure shot HDR because it's really simple and you know the Insta360 app is a really powerful mobile editing. It looks like it is a mobile production software in your fingertip. Here I would like to share with you my screen capture and to uh, save you time and efforts, I prefer to use this quick reader because with the quick reader you can directly insert your external data into a mobile platform or at the same time you can maintain a wireless connection to your internet and when you jump inside this one you're gonna see these photos well uh, I do have some pure shot HDR images well you can see this one uh, tab and as you can see the pure shot is post-processing on each raw DMG format and immediately the stack and merge all these photos. This is how we get. And this is a single pure shot photo. It's not a pure shot HDR because you can see the highlight areas are totally blown out. And later you can see uh, for each one of the shots that being captured with pure shot HDR, that it has an HDR icon on the bottom left. Here you can see this one. HDR and you can see uh, on the Insta360 app it will automatically stack and merge on your fingertip on the basis of the ISP format that is the Insta360 JPEG file it's not a raw DNG file but anyway on this 360 panorama uh, this is a three shot bracket with pure shot HDR as you can see as you can see the, the, the detail in the highlight has been retained from this images. But overall, you can see the there's no ghost effect because every one of the shots will be captured with burst capture mode. It's captured lightning fast. But uh, you know, on the basis of JPEG photo, it's simple, it's fast, but for the quality, in terms of the quality, it's not the best imaging quality. To get the best imaging quality, you should better use your desktop workflow, which I will show you later on. So to shot and stack and merge with pure shot HDR is really simple. Just uh, tap the button and after this a few seconds everyone has been done automatically for you. As you can see this one it's a pure shot HDR all the detail and the highlight and uh, it also has a some insta panel it's automatically reframe the shot for you and you can also use color plus before and after, but sometimes I think the color process is a little bit overcooked. 
Anyway, uh, despite all of these options, you also have this, uh, you can use, use some screen capture. You can also use some beauty effects. Well, on the beauty effects, you can make your skin, skin tone looks better. Uh, it depends on your aesthetic. For me, this is my basic settings. And you can copy and paste, and you can also see the before and after. This is a must-have feature for some of you guys. It also have some filters, and they also have different options. But uh, you know, uh, I normally leave it as off because I like the standard color for the dual one-inch sensors. Uh, for some moody shot, you can choose some preset and add some transparency and make your photo looks better. And you also can reset. You can also reset the photos. Once we reset, you can start from scratch. Well, uh, this is all of the basic stuff. I also change aspect ratios to use to capture some reframe shots. And on the settings, you can also have some more options. For example, you can uh, use flow state stabilization. You can reduce the chromatic aberration. And you can also add logos on the bottom. As you can see, this is the Insta360 logo. And you can also turn off the HDR in case you just want the single shot in the sequence. Yes, as you say, you can turn it on or off. Turn it on or off. This is the before and after. You can see huge improvement in the dynamic range. Okay, so far so good. This is a basic recap on the 360 photos. And after it's gonna be done, you can also make some further editing. You can export as the 360 image in Igrex rectangular format. You can also export as a reframe normal shot, rectilinear shot. So it's up to you. And you can also share on your social media immediately. So it is really simple and intuitive. So this is a basic recap on your mobile platform. And coming next, let's jump to the Insta 360 Studio 2022. I'd like to share with you the real power of the 40 bit Cardeps HDR DNG file that has been regenerated by the studio software. And the first moment we insert your camera or your SD card reader, the studio software will automatically detect and it will immediately detect the new storage device detected and you can import all of them automatically for you, both photos and videos. So it's really simple and intuitive design for the studio software, which I love about Insta360, the desktop workflow. It's because it's make the workflow. You can see the basic list. For those of the photos that have been captured with HDR, here you can see the HDR DNG 009 to 011. So there's three shot in bracket. And take a look at the photos. This, everything has been done on the DNG software. So this is a really high quality. And for the single raw DNG file, you can also use pure shot on the go. This is a pure shot. You can turn it on or turn it off, turn it on. This is a before and after. You can see a huge improvement on imaging quality, especially when you zoom in, you can see the, the detail on the grass. This is a before. It's after, okay. For the HDR shot, things got a lot more interesting. Let's take a look at the photos, the three shot in bracket. And for the file name that is without DNG, this is a straight out uh, photos from ISP format. Well, you get to see the same quality on the Insta360 app. So the HDR stack can merge on the basis of the individual uh, ISP file. Here you can see, uh, the overall result is good, but definitely not brilliant because the 8-bit color depth is still quite limited for HDR stacking the merge. And for this one, on the basis of three raw DNG file, the generate HDR photos is also really, really fast. And this time, what you're going to get is the most stunning quality from the Insta360 cameras. Here you can see the quality itself is simply awesome and you get to retain all the detail in the highlight and shadows and you can even export these images in the, in the stitch 
14-bit raw TFG file. And you can also cycle through each one of the individual shots uh, with ISO 100F2.2, three shot bracket. You can see that. And the final result is 6.5K. So this, this image, the image straight out from camera is great enough. And I will multi-select, multi-select these three images and click on export. Well, if you definitely click on export, uh, you have different options. You can export all the exported photos, uh, uh, apply it automatically horizon leveling, and use the Nadir logos. I always turn the Nadir logo off, and uh, I don't want to export all the exported photos because I love the stack and merge high quality result. When you fully export all the photos that have been captured with pure shot HDR, this is gonna get in your folder. So each one of the bracket shots will be export into individual folder. For example, I have export three pure shot HDR photos into three individual photos. I click on every one of them. As you can see, I got a merge raw TNG file together with a JPEG file. As far as I know, this JPEG file has been regenerated from its high quality raw DNG format with PureShot algorithm. So the overall, the color looks pretty stunning. And if you take a closer look at the merge DNG file, you get to see the 40 bit color depth. It's RGB 40 bit and file size is surprisingly 121 megabytes. So this is insane. It's a huge file size with a lot of raw data for you to play around with. Well, let's open this with camera raw. And I think this overall result is pretty satisfying for me. I love the straight out result from Steel Software, the regenerated from this uh, merge DNG file. So for me, for 90% of the use case, I think this photographs is definitely useful and the overall quality is stunning. But if you do want to push it a step further, this is where the 40-bit raw DNG files really shines. Here you can see I play around with the Adobe Camera Raw. I use Auto. As you can see, I could bring back I could bring back more detail in the highlight, as you can see, but sometimes you do come across with some artifacts, you know? For this one, the result is it, it, pretty stunning. And for this one, you do have more data to play with, and you can add some texture, you can bring back more files in the shadow area, and you can get, uh, you can get a little bit of saturation, and you can even you can even sharp the overall result a little bit. You see that? So, so before, it's after, before and after. So this is the 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 result from the pure shot HDR. This is from the raw DNG file. As you can see, the imaging quality from the raw DNG format is still slightly better compared with this one. Because with pure shot algorithm, the denoise will be applied to your photos. So I, so far so good. So with the desktop workflow, you literally get much better quality rather than, than the Inter360 app mobile platform. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Uh, these photos I also love to share with you. So this one is the result from the, the raw file with pure shot and stacker and the stacking in the camera. I think I, I, I am satisfied with the overall result. And for this one, I still have more data to play with. I use auto settings, add some textures. Sometimes I can even add more filters, warm contrast. This is kind of like a Peter McKinney gold look. Yeah, this is what I love in my preset. And sometimes I use 
reduce the texture to make the overall result looks more appealing. So this is the creative play with the high quality raw DNG file with 40 color depths. And this is another result straight out from the camera with the standard color. So I like bones of the photos and I think each for each one of the shots, so this one, this one is definitely useful for your desktop workflow and for some professional virtual tours. And for more creative shot use cases, I would definitely use a 40-bit HDR DNG file to play around with. And I almost get noise-free result and with a lot more potential in highlighted shadows and a lot more details. So this is a basic recap on the desktop workflow with Adobe Camera Raw. And you can also use the Adobe Lightroom or some other raw development software to fully squeeze out the imaging quality behind the, the HDR DNG file as regenerated by the studio software in 40-bit color depths. And after all these tries and errors on HDR capability behind the One RS Dual 1-inch CMOS sensor, I do have some tips and tricks to share with you to help you better master the pure shot HDR. So first, you should notice that the One RS is capable to capture the, all the nine shots in raw DNG format with burst capture mode. So that is to say, the camera could capture all the nine shot exposure really, really fast. But it takes quite a long time to save the buffer and save all the data into the micro SD card. And considering that the pure shot HDR, all the shots has, will be captured in the burst capture mode, uh, literally you can, you do not have to use the pure shot on the standard tripod, but uh, the, the shooting on the tripod is highly recommended. But sometimes when you're traveling, if you do want to capture some amazing shot in the extreme light scenarios, you can shot pure shot HDR with handheld, but remember to hold your selfie stick really, really steady to eliminate every tiny little movement and next one to get the, the best efficiency of the pure shot HDR, you don't have to always shoot every scenario with nine shot bracket. I highly recommend you use your, uh, your, use your phone or some other cameras to mirror the real dynamic range of your shooting scenarios and carefully arrange your bracket number. So with plus or minus one EV settings, sometimes I think five or seven shot in bracket is great enough. Another one of the bonus tip for you to better master pure shot HDR is to use an external quick reader for your One RS dual one inch sensor. Because when you capture in raw DNG format, you get quite a lot of images data saving your micro SD card. And you know, to remove your micro SD card from One RS one inch 36 edition is quite complicated. And you can use the a faster external micro SD card reader to transfer all data into your PC or Mac to save you more time and efforts. So, you know, sometimes time is money. As you might have noticed from my previous screen capture, when you generate the 14-bit color depths in the raw DNG format with stitch result, uh, in your Adobe Camera Raw, you can literally bring back a lot more detail and you do have a lot more flexibility in the post process to make your image looks more appealing. The studio software will also generate a high quality JPEG format from this high quality raw DNG format that has 40-bit color depth and stitch result. That is to say, if you do want to improve your efficiency, you can skip the high quality raw format and instead you can choose the high quality JPEG file that has been generated with the studio software on the basis of this 40-bit raw DNG format. Last but not least, always carefully arrange the stitching line for your 1-inch 360 edition because this camera lens is a lot thicker, although the native stitching quality with dynamic stitch is quite awesome. But sometimes, especially if you shot in a tiny new space, the stitching line is quite crucial for the high-quality 360 photos. So always carefully arrange your stitching line to make your post process uh, even faster and save you even more time and effort. Time to wrap up. In this video, I'll share with you the basic history about the pure shot, 
a basic mechanism on how to use the options on your One S camera models. And I would also like to share with you the basic workflow on the mobile platform and on the desktop workflow to generate the premium quality. But you should bear in mind the Pure Shot HDR is not perfect and it could be much better with a former upgrade. Here to say I do want to have the full manual control on this the EV0 settings because with the, the full manual control I can get the best imaging quality from the one inch sensor. You know with IMAX uh, 283 there is a huge potential judging from my own experience on the CD1. The second you know for the HDR shooting mode, the ISO is very crucial to get to the best imaging quality. So if possible, I do want the Insta360 engineer to add the ISO lock, to lock into the lowest ISO or lock to some relatively high quality settings. That, that is to say we can unlock even more potential from this two one inch sensor. I do want the OneRS core module to automatically detect and calculate the real bracket number for us, but instead of choosing the numbers by ourselves. For example, if you detect the scenes that has a dynamic range that you can capture with four shots in bracket, maybe you can capture in four, and save more time and efforts. And you should notice that with a pure shot and the post-processing each one of the raw DOG format, you can you don't have to use conventional uh, eight or a seven or nine shot in bracket because pure shot HDR is the real power of the AI algorithm and the whole pipeline can be adapted with the new potential of the AI algorithm. So I'm sharing with you my future thoughts on pure shot HDR and I do hope the Incisory engineer if you are watching this video I do want you to listen carefully and maybe make some consideration on the future former upgrade that to elevate the Pure Shot HDR to the even further and deliver the best possible imaging quality from the 1 inch 360 edition. And that is all about this video on the Pure Shot HDR. It is uh, my basic investigation and basic experience on this fantastic shooting mode. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to sum up, subscribe and hit notification bell. So stay safe. See you next time. Bye.